Welcome to the Channel 6 News. I'm D. Tranter reporting. The winemaking business gears up for a big year in southeast Utah. And stock car racing and country music dominate a busy Moab weekend. We'll have those stories when Channel 6 News continues. A symbol of strength, a symbol of stability, a symbol of longevity. First Western National Bank embodying the values of Canyon Country for 30 years. In case you've been too busy to notice, McDonald's prices have changed. An original hamburger is just 59 cents, a cheeseburger just 69 cents, a sausage biscuit 79 cents. But if you're in a hurry, don't worry. Because this is not a promotion. It's McDonald's today. And from now on, Grape growers in the Moab area are looking forward to the harvest this fall, and a bill passed by the Utah legislature could mean many more harvests in the future years. The lawmakers passed a bill that will allow Arches Winery, Utah's only winemaker, to lower the markup on their wine. Both Spanish Valley and Castle Valley have recently become areas specializing in growing wine grapes. Testing by state officials showed the soil and climate conditions are excellent for the fruit. That helped convince Anita Bradford to open the Arches Winery two years ago in Spanish Valley. The bill was sponsored by Southeast Utah's representative, David Adams. That was a very beneficial piece of legislation that we passed for Moab and the winery and the uh, vineyard owners. In the past, uh, the vineyard had to live on on-site sales and uh, the state was taking 61 percent of their gross markup in addition to taxes and they were the state was contributing nothing to the operation of the winery covering none of the overhead nor were they contributing to any uh, the investment when any business gives up 61 percent of their revenue in exchange for no benefits there's a very small chance that they will survive. The new bill will reduce that markup. Adams says it has encouraged some to stay in the wine business and others to think about getting in. Talking to the Bradfords who own the winery and talking to some of the growers, they're very optimistic. I don't have much expertise in this area. I don't grow grapes, but they are very optimistic and mentioned several people that are very interested in increasing their present vineyards and some people from outside of the area who are interested in coming in with some substantial uh, production of grapes. But this is Utah and the bill did have to do with alcoholic beverages and that made getting the bill through the legislature more difficult and making sure the focus stayed on economic development. The good thing about it is is well, we think the winery will be in business now for a long time. We think the people down here who are growing grapes can now uh, make some long-range decisions whether they would like to increase their production. And if anyone else is contemplating doing it, it would appear that now they will have a stable market for their product, for their, for their grapes, if they want to do that. And that was the main purpose for the legislation. You were the sponsor of the original bill that dealt with this same question. And Governor Bangarter was one of the major public supporters of that bill. But uh, the LDS Church at the beginning came out with a statement saying it might be better to wait a while before making changes in the liquor law. Has the church as a group um, gone along with this bill? Do they support it? I think they took a position of, uh, of neutrality, neither supporting it nor opposing it. After much discussion, I think the 
the, we came to an agreement that this was an economic development issue for Grand County and had very little to do with the liquor laws in the state of Utah. This has nothing, th this particular legislation will have little effect on the volume or the amount of, of wine that is sold or where it's consumed or how it's transported. It uh, is uh, an economic development issue for Grand County. Arches Winery is very small by industry standards, producing about 4,000 cases of wine per year, but that amount is sure to continue rising over the next few years. It was an action-packed evening at Red Rock Speedway Saturday night with great competitive racing and some close calls. Close to 600 racing fans jammed the stands and the pits for the long evening of hobby car time trials and races. Sportsman's class competition and the powder puff race pitting the best women drivers in the area. And Moab racers did well. Justin Haviland was first in the hobby time trials with Ryan Ellis second, and Aaron Spangler and Craig Spangler came in first and second in the sportsman's field. Daryl Dixon won the Hobby Trophy Award. And in the Hobby main event, Kevin Sheets came in first with Craig Spangler winning the sportsman's main race. And Norwood, Colorado's Joey Ferguson took the Powder Puff Trophy. There were some scary moments the hobby main event, a car driven by Troy Brooks, hit the pit tire wall, knocking it back and into spectator Tammy Lawley. But Tammy, shaken up, was not seriously hurt. Then in the same race, things got a little bit hairy just a few laps later. A car driven by Jody Mitchell hit the uh, second turn when it slid out of the edge of the track. It bounced up against the wall and nearly flipped over. The race was stopped as crews went to check the damage. Everything was all right, but the race was stopped while the record service towed the vehicle off the track. According to Jan Radcliffe of the Moab Chamber of Commerce, the next night of racing will be June 20th. Riders in the sky entertain the crowd at the old Spanish Trail Arena as Moab gets ready for the Butch Cassidy Days Rodeo. We'll have those stories when Channel 6 News continues. foods, stress-free shopping, where the service is unbelievable. For the unusual gift, try Sherry's Country Store Gifts. Sherry grew up around country stores and knows there has to be something for all the five senses. Something to see, smell, taste, touch and hear, and give the sense you're a welcome customer. The walls are filled with unique goods from different corners of the world. So for the memorable gift of quality, come to Sherry's Country Store Gifts in the Western Plaza. Whether you're a cowboy or just a cowboy at heart, when you head for the Butch Cassidy Days Rodeo in Moab, make sure you're wearing the new pair of Wrangler cowboy cut jeans from On the Edge of 415 North Main. Wrangler cowboy cut jeans are extra tough, super durable, and they look as great as they feel. That's why 96% of the PRCA champion cowboys wear them. So before you head for the rodeo, head for On the Edge at 415 North Main and take advantage of the great deals on Wrangler cowboy cut jeans. Summer is here, and with the long daylight, now's a good time to get out to the Moab Golf Course for an early morning or evening round of fresh air and exercise. Described as one of the most beautiful courses in the state, the Moab Golf Course has all you need to get started in the sport, from club rentals to private and group lessons, and a snack bar, driving range, and complete pro shop. Why let the sunshine go to waste? Call the Moab Golf Course at 259-6488. It was Riders in the Sky Saturday evening, the kickoff to Butch Cassidy Day's Rodeo Week. 
The group was performing the first musical concert at the old Spanish Trail Arena in Spanish Valley before an enthusiastic crowd. The Riders in the Sky is one of the most popular country music groups in the nation. With a blend of harmonizing and self-effacing humor, the group not only is featured on its own CBS children's show, but has often appeared on the Nashville Network and Austin City Limits. Sure beats me. Oh, lady, oh, the crowd thoroughly enjoyed the work of fiddler Woody Paul, bassist Too Slim, and the leader of the group, Ranger Doug, known far and wide as the idol of the American youth. The concert was the beginning of the Butch Cassidy Day's activity. The highlight will be a rodeo Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights and there will be regular entertainment each evening and on Saturday at the corner of Main Street and First South. The Master of Ceremonies and the rodeo announcer will be Don Jesser, rodeo veteran from Idaho, who will be in town all week long. Jesser says this should be the best rodeo Moab has ever seen. Well, the rodeo this year is going to be, uh, in, in one word, awesome. Uh, you know, we've got a, a new stock contractor this year, Lewis Fields and the Diamond G Rodeo Company, and they have went out of their way to, uh, to put together some of the finest rodeo stock in the country. You're going to find uh, the, the great bull, Ricky. Uh, you know, this bull has been out about 335 times and been ridden once. And uh, you're going to see some of the best bucking horses in the country, like uh, Captain Lewis. Uh, Captain Lewis, of course, named after Lewis Field, but uh, here's a bucking horse that's been around uh, for approximately, uh, oh, 15 years as, a, as a, what I call an athlete in rodeo. And uh, here's an animal that uh, goes to the national finals every year, uh, voted on by the Cowboys, and uh, works out really good. And along with the rodeo stock, Jesser expects some top-name cowboys to be coming for the competition. Uh, your rodeo committee here, uh, the Butch Cassidy Days Rodeo Committee, has uh, put together uh, a program that the Cowboys can't resist. They've added their added money from uh, about a $600 purse to a $1,000 purse. So uh, when you talk about $1,000 added in each event, the Cowboys look at that rodeo and they see that uh, the, the added money is there, and so they shoot it up. All the major events you expect at a rodeo will take place, including events that attract the best cowgirls. It'd be the bull riding, of course, and the saddle bronc riding, and the bareback riding, and the tie down calf roping, and the team roping, and the steer wrestling. And then uh, a lot of people don't realize this, but what's become the number one, or number one, uh, you might say, spectator sport or the event is the bull riding, but number two is the barrel racing. So all the top cowgirls in the country will be here due to the extra added money. The rodeo committee has set up a special staging area in the center of downtown at Maine and First South, and Jesser will spend some of his time as Master of Ceremonies. I'll be at the, what I call the Little Tucson. Actually, what it is is old Moab put together. They found it out back, and they just nailed it all up and stuck it up so that we could have a little town out here. But uh, there'll be uh, entertainment. Uh, there'll be a barbecue. There'll be a chuck wagon breakfast out there. Oh, we'll have uh, local entertainers. Uh, I'll be singing once in a while. I have some pictures down there to sign. Uh, I think Saturday afternoon uh, we will be having some cowboys, uh, and uh, from the start of the rodeo, I believe, through till Saturday uh, afternoon, we will have some some celebrity cowboys at that location there to sign autographs for the people. And remember, the rodeo gets underway Thursday evening at the Equestrian Center. Well, up next is the Canyon Country weather forecast when Channel 6 News continues. For the best RV camp park in Moab, it's Holiday Haven, with oversized spaces to accommodate the largest RV and cool, comfortable tent sites under mature shade trees, all with a convenient central location. Holiday Haven is also Moab's finest mobile home park that offers country living in the city. An established park with pool, playground, laundry facilities, and a retired section. For comfortable RV or mobile home living, it's Holiday Haven, 400 North, 5th West.
the seasons, through the miles, through the rough country of southeastern Utah, we get you through. We're GTE. We're your telephone company. Well, after a clear weekend, it was hazy sunshine in the valley on Monday with afternoon temperatures climbing to the 90-degree mark. Look for some unstable weather, though, over the next few days. Official National Weather Service uh, forecast calls for partly cloudy skies through Tuesday, and there is moisture moving up, a chance of some scattered showers throughout southern Utah. Look for some strong winds near the storms, and if you're planning to visit the canyons, keep an eye out for flash flooding. Look for afternoon temperatures to stay in the low to mid-90s, overnight lows down to around 65. The extended forecast calls for partly cloudy skies to stay around through the rest of the week with warmer temperatures up to near 100 degrees by Thursday and Friday. And that's news of Moab and Canyon Country. I'm D. Tranter reporting. Have a good day. Their horns are black and shiny, their hoods are made of steel. Their friends were still on the fire, and their hot breath he could feel. A bolt of fear shot through him as they bumped into the sky. We saw the riders coming along, and he heard their poor old cry. Yippee! Welcome to the Channel 6 News. I'm Tricia Marooney reporting. An Interior Department administrative trial could change the future of grazing in southeast Utah. We'll have that story when the Channel 6 News continues. See the sparkling jewel at Certified Ford, a new 92 Mercury Topaz two-door GS. Sporty with a five-speed stick, luggage rack, and seven-spoke aluminum wheels. Comfortable with cloth seats, cruise control, and the comfort convenience option group. Cool with air, AM, FM cassette, and a $400 cold cash rebate. See it, drive it, love it for under $10,000 at Certified Ford, your hometown dealer. For all your insurance needs in Moab, it's Central Utah Insurance. Home, auto, business, and life. You can depend on the fast, friendly service at Central Utah Insurance, 471 South Main. How do you have an instant party? Just buy a sack of subs at Subway. Take them home and serve them family style. It's more fun because everyone gets a taste of everything and no one has to cook. So if unexpected guests drop by unexpectedly or you don't feel like cooking dinner, pick up a sack of subs at Subway. We specialize in solving emergencies with food. For more information on these and other fine sandwiches, visit the Subway near you. Environmentalists are squaring off with the local BLM in a legal contest that could permanently change grazing practices in Utah. Here's Ken Davey with a report. An administrative trial taking place now is pitting environmental organizations against the Utah Farm Bureau and the Bureau of Land Management, and the result of that trial could permanently affect the way livestock can graze on federal lands. At issue is a portion of what is known as the comb wash grazing allotment. The environmentalists want to cut off grazing in the Arch, Road, Mule, Owl Creek, and Fish Creek Canyons. The chief protagonist of the environmental cause is Joe Feller, a professor of law at Arizona State University. 
Fellow was in Moab on Tuesday and explained to Channel 6 what, from his point of view, the case is all about. And the issues are basically um, whether the BLM is going to comply with the federal laws and with its own policies, which require it to protect the resources in the area and manage the area for more than just livestock production. It's an area with incredible um, natural values, uh, wildlife habitat, natural scenery, recreational opportunities, archaeological resources. And in fact, these values in the area are much greater than the value of the livestock forage in the area. Nonetheless, the BLM's management has emphasized livestock production at the expense of these other values, in spite of congressional laws which tell them to give attention to those other values. According to Feller, the BLM has the responsibility to make sure grazing doesn't damage the other values of the land. In this case, he says the damage done to the land should not be allowed to continue and that the agency should keep the livestock out until they study the problem. We're asking the court to do basically, I would say, three things. The first is to order the BLM to prepare a proper environmental impact statement which collects the information necessary to properly manage the area. The second is to enter into some kind of a reasoned decision-making process as to which parts of the allotment are appropriate for livestock grazing and which are not. And third, we are asking the court to order the BLM until it complies with the federal laws not to allow cattle grazing in a portion of the allotment. That Riparian areas, or stream beds and lakes, are only a small portion of the Canyonlands terrain, but almost three quarters of desert wildlife relies on that water. Feller says the federal government should understand what the damage could be before allowing activities to take place. Normally, in almost any other field of natural resources other than cattle grazing, it is presumed that you don't undertake an environmentally detrimental activity until you've done the proper environmental impact statement. For example, when the Forest Service proposes to cut timber, they do the environmental impact statement first before they cut the timber. Or if the uh, Department of Transportation is going to build an interstate highway or a bridge, you do the environmental analysis first to aid you in deciding whether or not to build it. Uh, the unusual thing about grazing is that uh, even though the BLM was ordered over, excuse me, nearly 20 years ago to do environmental impact statements for grazing, the grazing goes on whether or not the environmental impact statements are, are properly done. Um, and that has created um, the current unsatisfactory situation we're in today. If the environmentalists win, what they win will be small. Just 10% of the comb wash allotment would be affected, and the entire value could only be put at a couple of thousand dollars. But it could set a precedent, forcing the federal government to study the long-term effects of the policies before implementing them. And it would be another blow to the public lands grazing industry, already a shrinking part of the economy. Supporters of grazing say the canyons in southeast Utah have sustained livestock for generations without eliminating the beauty and recreational value of that land. Feller says that's not entirely true. All of the evidence overwhelmingly indicates that the wildlife habitat, the riparian, the streamside ecosystem in those canyons is, a, is in a highly degraded state. They are producing nowhere near the benefits that they could produce. As far as the recreational beauty, yes, they're still beautiful, um, and people still go there. The analogy I like to use is if you went to the Louvre in Paris and smeared cow manure all over the floors and the walls, um, the Mona Lisa would still be there, and people would still go to see the Mona Lisa, and it would still be a beautiful painting. But it still doesn't make it a smart thing to do. Aligned against Feller is the Utah Farm Bureau and the Bureau of Land Management, who have provided testimony saying grazing has had only a limited effect on the canyons, that the so-called degradation is mostly the result of natural forces, geology, and climate. The administrative trial will continue next month. It could then be months before a decision is made, and appeals to the Interior Board of Land Appeals are sure to follow, and possibly to the federal courts. 
But even if it takes years for a final conclusion, the evidence being presented by both sides will go a long way in possibly redefining the BLM's rules and regulations regarding cows and sheep on public land. This is Ken Davey for Channel 6. Services will be held Wednesday for Moab resident Charles Calkins, Jr., who died Sunday at his home. He was 65 years of age. He is survived by his wife, Rena of Moab, and sons Shane Calkins, Mike Tourville, and Rod Warner, and daughters Susie Mitchell and Cindy Cheney, as well as six grandchildren. Services will take place Wednesday evening, beginning at 7 p.m. at the Community Baptist Church. And services will be held Wednesday as well for Moab resident Steve Aerosmith, who died Saturday at Allen Memorial Hospital. He was 30 years of age. Steve ran the Humpback Chubb River tours out of Moab and Dolores from 1985 through this spring. He is survived by his mother, Molly Jackson Aerosmith, brother Jeffrey, and sister Edith Ann. A special memorial service will be held along the Colorado River Wednesday afternoon. Friends and family will gather 10.3 miles upriver along the river road at 4 p.m. And locals were saddened to hear that former longtime Moab resident John Wesley Newman died on Sunday in Roosevelt, Utah. John Newman came to Moab in 1935, where he worked as a mechanic and raised a family. He is survived by his wife, Armina, and six children. Services will be held Thursday in Tabiona at the LDS Chapel at 1 p.m., with viewing beginning at noon. County officials are getting ready to present a new master plan to residents, and more visitors than ever come to area national parks. We'll have those stories when the Channel 6 News continues. Music of Moab, music for everyone. Jazz, country, rock, classical, blues, and top 40. Everything for your listening pleasure is now available at Music of Moab. Conveniently located in the Western Plaza, Music of Moab carries your favorite music, CDs, cassettes, and a wide selection of music accessories. Music of Moab, your music headquarters for southeastern Utah. Music of Moab, music for everyone. If it's housewares, fabrics, or school supplies you need, think Sprouse. If it's bed and bath items or health and beauty aids you're looking for, think Sprouse. For breeding cards, footwear, or toys, think Sprouse. For more values more often, think Sprouse. Now for extra savings, look for these special tags, manager's special purchases, jackpot buys, and discount food and snacks. Sprouse. Whether you're a cowboy or just a cowboy at heart, when you head for the Butch Cassidy Days Rodeo in Moab, make sure you're wearing a new pair of Wrangler cowboy cut jeans from On the Edge of 415 North Main. Wrangler cowboy cut jeans are extra tough, super durable, and they look as great as they feel. That's why 96% of the PRCA champion cowboys wear them. So before you head for the rodeo, head for On the Edge at 415 North Main and take advantage of the great deals on Wrangler cowboy cut jeans. Remember. It's time. Time for Spanish Valley Nursery to have a summer sale. Hanging baskets now 50% off at 1288 each. It's time to think about Father's Day with a gift of shrubbery or bearing fruit trees. And it's still time for bedding plants like geraniums and petunias. But don't wait too long. They're disappearing fast at Spanish Valley Nursery, where it's always first quality. On Monday, June 15th, the Grand County Commission will meet with Planning Commission members to go over a final draft of a county master plan. The Planning Commission has been meeting for months to come up with a plan that can guide future planning and zoning changes and help in directing future development. Recent state laws make it mandatory that counties have plans and show how they hope to grow and develop in the future. Grand County's current draft was compiled by the county's Economic Development Office and is being edited by the Planning Commission. According to County Commissioner David Knutson, that's a lot less elaborate than the state is calling for. The thing that probably has me most concerned is that they have budgeted about between, they're estimated between ten and thirty thousand dollars to do a master plan. Well, we've spent a lot of money in the past, and we've probably, some total, spent that. 
But this time around, we, we didn't come anywhere close to spending that. The question is, is are they spending way too much money or are we missing something, you know, or are we really missing something? So anyway, after we sit down with the planning and zoning and kind of hash things out between us, I want to take that product to the state and say, look at this and tell me what you think. Are we, you know, are we gro grossly negligent in something or, you know, does this look adequate or, or whatever else? And then bring that back and uh, if they say, well, yeah, it looks like you pretty much covered everything, come back to planning and zoning and discuss that and then take it to the public. The Grand County draft plan has been controversial. One section calls for continuation of the 1872 mining law, which allows miners and mining companies to take private possession of public lands at a very low cost. The plan also calls for allowing some development with mitigation of wetlands, such as the Moab sloughs. And the document also says the Colorado River corridor, now zoned mostly for grazing and agriculture, could be commercially developed. Other parts of the plan are general, calling for encouraging residential construction and keeping homeowner costs reasonable and protecting the quality of life for residents. A copy of the plan is available for inspection at the courthouse. <clears throat> As things stand right now, paramutual betting is an even money proposition among Utah voters. Supporters of allowing counties to decide if betting will be allowed at local horse races are working now to gather about 65,000 signatures on petitions to allow the practice. They say the betting is needed to make Utah a more attractive place for horse owners and breeders. And they add that the best of Utah's horses are being taken out of state to make more money. But opponents of the practice, including the LDS Church, say betting is a moral issue they will try to stop. Last week, LDS leaders met with stake presidents from around Utah, encouraging them to get involved in the anti-gambling movement. But a recent poll by the Salt Lake Tribune shows the issue, if voted on today, could be too close to call. According to the survey taken last week, 46.3% of Utah voters say they would approve the measures, and 465 say they would vote against. And for the most part, it breaks down along religious lines. About 75% of active LDS members say they are against the betting, with only 20% in favor. But for non-active LDS members, the numbers are just the opposite, with almost 75% in favor and only 17% against. And voters of other religions, or no religious affiliations, also support the plan overwhelmingly. So it comes down to the 7% of Utah voters who say they don't know how they would vote. Visitation figures for area national parks show once again that we're on course for another record-breaking tourist season. The Park Service statistics for the month of May have now been released and they show a jump in the total attendance figures. At Arches National Park, 104,000 people entered the park in May. That's a 12% jump from the April 1991 figure. So far this year, more than a quarter million people have been to the park. That's up a big 19% over last year. The rainy days did reduce the number of park campers last month, but so far this year, camping is also up by 5%. At Canyonlands National Park, visitation was about the same as May of 1991, with over 53,000 visitors. That's about 300 fewer people than a year ago. But so far this year, total visitation year-to-date remains a solid 9% above the record-breaking 1991 tourist year. The most popular part of the park was the Island in the Sky District, with almost 30,000 visitors. That was followed by the Needles, and the remote Mays District had over 2,000 visitors. And down at Natural Bridges National Monument, visitation was up 10% in May and 11% so far this year. Up next is the Canyon Country weather forecast when the Channel 6 News continues. A symbol of strength, a symbol of stability, a symbol of longevity, First Western National Bank, embodying the values of Canyon Country for 30 years.
seasons, through the miles, through the rough country of southeastern Utah, we get you through. We're GTE. We're your telephone company. Bright sunshine stayed in the valley on Monday with afternoon temperatures above 90 degrees. And look for more of the same weather over the next few days. The official National Weather Service forecast for Moab and Canyon Country calls for mostly sunny skies through Wednesday with patches of late afternoon and evening clouds. Mercury readings should get a little bit warmer each day until by Saturday we should be near the 100 degree mark and look for overnight lows in the mid 60s. There could be some scattered thunder showers in the afternoons and in the mountains and mesas watch out for heavier downpours. And that's the news of Moab and Canyon Country. I'm Trisha Marooney reporting. Welcome to the Channel 6 News. I'm D. Tranta reporting. Mayor Tom Stock says that despite rumors, the city's sewer plant is in good shape for future population growth and economic development. We'll have that story when Channel 6 News continues. Whether you're a cowboy or just a cowboy at heart, when you head for the Butch Cassidy Days Rodeo in Moab, make sure you're wearing a new pair of Wrangler cowboy cut jeans from on the edge of 415 North Main. Wrangler cowboy cut jeans are extra tough, super durable, and they look as great as they feel. That's why 96% of the PRCA champion cowboys wear them. So before you head for the rodeo, head for on the edge at 415 North Main and take advantage of the great deals on Wrangler cowboy cut jeans. Make Nelson's Heating and Refrigeration your first step to cool this summer with one of their new swamp coolers. Nelson's also offers parts, service, and installation. And if it's appliances you're after, Nelson's proudly presents Whirlpool and Maytag brands for low energy use, fewer repairs, and great warranties. Nelson's Heating and Refrigeration. Serving Moab for 30 years, 1070 Bowling Alley Lane. For the best RV camp park in Moab, it's Holiday Haven, with oversized spaces to accommodate the largest RV and cool, comfortable tent sites under mature shade trees, all with a convenient central location. Holiday Haven is also Moab's finest mobile home park that offers country living in the city. An established park with pool, playground, laundry facilities, and a retired section. For comfortable RV or mobile home living, it's Holiday Haven, 400 North, 5th West. The city's sewer treatment plant is in better shape than rumors in town are implying, according to Moab Mayor Tom Stocks. Stocks was speaking to the weekly luncheon of the Moab Chamber of Commerce on Tuesday when the discussion came around to how much capacity is left in the sewer plant for future expansion, both within the city limits and in Spanish Valley. The city's water treatment plant, located on the west side of town, has been a topic of concern for city council members who worry that fast growth of residents and visitors could overtax the system. 
But according to stocks, the sewer system still has a lot of room before capacity is reached. This plant is designed to accept 1,300,000 gallons of liquid in the plant. That's an average flow. Uh, on Memorial Day we, weekend, the highest peak was 1,500,000. I had three of us on the phone, on an intercom phone, and we talked to Al, and he said, well, that's not a problem. That plant should be able to take up to two million gallons because we're talking average flow, as long as you're not going to run over a couple of days. But if you're going to run over that, then we're going to have to take a look and see what effects it's having on the plant. Now, the plant operators is very concerned if it gets over 1.3 because they feel like maybe some of our tests aren't going to come out, and that may be true. So we've got to get the public health department now a James Montgomery engineering firm, Al Anderson, together to discuss that. We talked about the average flow being about 930,000 gallons. And Al said, well, you got a lot of space left then, haven't you? I said, I don't know, I'm asking. He said, well, 930,000 versus a million three, you got, you've got a, a cavity there of about 44% increase that you can put on that system and not hurt it. In his half-hour address to the chamber, the mayor touched on a number of topics, including the ongoing discussion of the landfill. Right now, the facility is operated by the county, who say they can't afford it. City officials have urged the formation of a special service district to operate it, but there may not be time to get one up and running before the county pulls out. The county, at one of their meetings, is city has been somewhat at odds and not communicating well with this garbage dump because the county has indicated that they want the city to pay and uh, with the city paying already uh, property taxes in the county we have the, the city has believed that it's double taxation to have them pay on top of what they normally pay to the county's doing well the county indicated in one of their meetings a week ago Monday I believe it was that they had seventy two thousand five hundred dollars set aside to run the county landfill with, and when that money ran out, which they anticipated sometime at the end of July, that they would no longer maintain the property, but they would not close it. So we have looked at some alternatives, one of which should be to have a central dump for those that are having garbage collected in the city and into large 30-ton trucks and then moved up to East Corbin. And then that would be handled for the city and the county to still re be responsible because we are loggerheads and we don't the council doesn't want to fight them over the issue. That is one alternative. On May the 31st, however, and the other day they had a computer run, shows that they've already spent $87,000. So after talking to Manuel in the morning and by Tuesday evening, I find that there's 72,000 was gone. Uh, and hopefully David Knudsen will be getting with me today. I told him that. He said he was unaware of it yesterday afternoon, that they had overspent their budget already. The sewer system, the dump, in fact, most municipal services have had to expand to provide for the increasing number of visitors coming to town. To offset that, the mayor had proposed to the city council the imposition of a room occupancy tax on motels. That proposal was rejected by the council, a decision Stocks doesn't agree with. And both the income has been changed back not to include an item of uh, room, uh, transient room tax, because as one council member put, that would be picking on one industry only, and that's the motels. I have a strong feeling about that, however, and that is that the motels, uh, and I think it's a, a legal position. We have a lot of people in the chamber and the travel council and those who promote uh, volleyball and baseball and softball and the rodeo and these that put their heart into it because they love the particular item or thing they're doing in, attract, in, in attracting people here, the Red Rock four-wheelers, the mountain bikers, and, uh, and uh, road runners, the Red Rock road runners, and, and those. And, but whenever we have these events, there's a tendency uh, to increase the price of your motel rates. And so I feel that if that's going to be happening, and there isn't a donation coming directly to the chamber to help subsidize these individuals in these organizations, then it would be appropriate that we have a group occupation tax that would come to the city, and then the city ought to give more to the chamber to be able to make that happen. The speaker at next Tuesday's Chamber of Commerce luncheon will be National Park Service Superintendent Walt Dabney, the man in charge of both Canyonlands and Arches National Park.
Moab residents can comment on the next city budget at a special public hearing one week from Friday. And it's country entertainment as Moab celebrates Butch Cassidy Days. We'll have those stories when Channel 6 News continues. symbol of strength, a symbol of stability, a symbol of longevity. First Western National Bank embodying the values of Canyon Country for 30 years. Through the seasons, through the miles, through the rough country of southeastern Utah, we get you through. We're GTE. We're your telephone company. value foods, stress-free shopping, where the service is unbelievable. One week from Friday, the Moab City Council will hold its annual budget public hearing. That decision was made at a special council meeting Tuesday evening. The council will present a proposal to increase city general fund spending by about 6% from one point eight eight million dollars to a little over two million dollars the extra revenue is expected to come from increases in sales and use tax and a jump in gross business license fees better known as the local sales tax the biggest expenditure will be in police at about four hundred eighty one thousand dollars and the streets department at three hundred eighty five thousand dollars that budget is available to the public, but be prepared to pay for it. A copy is open for inspection at City Hall, but if you want a copy to take home, you'll be charged $3.70. In other business, the council was scheduled to discuss the Cowboy Inn, but tabled the agenda item when developer Randy Day did not make it to the meeting. The Cowboy Inn on South Main Street is a project of Day and Colin Fryer. The plan is to build a motel out of modular home-type buildings. City law says prior approval from the city council is required for moved-on buildings before any construction can begin, and that approval was never given. So last week, the council voted to put a halt on the work pending their deliberations. By law, council members must determine that the moved-on structures will not be a detriment to surrounding properties before they can give the go-ahead. According to Council Member Terry Warner, that might require hiring outside help to make that determination. Well, there's people here that are concerned to know what's going on. And I'd just like to, uh, I don't know that I'll probably will eventually make a motion here to table if he doesn't show up, but I would just like to simply say that I uh, am the individual who has basically initiated the uh, motions to take this situation where we are today and, and I'd like to follow up on that in saying that I've requested that uh, I think that this council's agreement I'd like to bring this forth that we have uh, go outside the city of Moab uh, contact a, uh, an appraiser from Salt Lake or wherever we can find one that can come down here and give us an appraisal situation of, the, of an overview appraisal of the whole situation as to how it's going to affect the surrounding property values uh, I don't know that it's necessary to get actual dollars and cents appraisal, but uh, <clears throat> I would like some professional input. Council members tabled the entire discussion until a future meeting. And many Moab residents can expect to pay more for business licenses. The council passed a resolution increasing the fee for professional licenses from $60 per year to $100. Included are attorneys, accountants, contractors, and a host of others. Moab is in the middle of a busy week, beginning with last Saturday's Rider in the Sky concert and ending with the rodeo finals this Saturday. 
It was also time for the circus. The Carson and Barnes Five Ring Circus, under the biggest tent in the world, came to town on Tuesday in conjunction with the Lions Club. The circus plays in up to 200 cities and towns in a year, and they are experts at setting up and taking down the big top. It was hard work in the desert sun, but the specially trained workforce did their job in record time with the help of the less skilled as well. But the stars of the circus took the morning off, relaxing in the warm sun, psyching themselves up for the coming performance or just enjoying breakfast. And a portion of the receipts of the circus go to the various civic projects of the Moab Lions Club. Well, the Butch Cassidy Days Rodeo gets underway on Thursday evening at the Old Spanish Trail Arena. In just a few years, the event has started to attract some of the best cowboys and cowgirls in the nation. Events include riding world-class rodeo bulls and trying to stay on bucking broncos, along with calf roping, barrel racing, and trick riding exhibitions. There are rodeo performances Thursday, Friday, and Saturday evening at 8 p.m. Thursday afternoon is the annual rodeo barbecue, and on Saturday morning, it's the rodeo parade down Main Street. And Wednesday evening and Saturday during the day, you can drop by Old Moab at the corner of Main Street and First South for Western entertainment. Tuesday evening, residents had a chance to meet the 1992 rodeo queen, Dusty Simmons. Um, I'm representing Grant County and the County Lands Rodeo. And it's not just this rodeo. I go to different rodeos, and then I go up to Utah State and I'll compete for Miss Utah. The crowd was entertained by, among others, Shotgun Love, the singing of Chris and Neil Royer. God, darling, tonight I am reminded how much these two hearts need romance. You know it isn't very often we get this kind of chance. Why don't we get caught? There goes my heart, made dumb forever, so far apart, but only the lonely know why I cry, only the lonely. Wednesday evening, you can hear the Stormy Rose Band, Janae Knight, and Randy and Marcy, and it's free of charge. Well, up next is the Canyon Country weather forecast when Channel 6 News continues. Rim Cyclery is the hub of the action in the mountain bike capital of the world, carrying the specialized Klein and Mountain Goat brands and fully staffed with experts in mountain bike service. Rim is also your stop for camping gear and accessories and sportswear featuring Vermici shorts and tops. Bikers, here's a simple rule. If you're gearing up, see Rim. If you've broken down, see Rim. 94 West, 100 North. In case you've been too busy to notice, McDonald's prices have changed. An original hamburger is just 59 cents, a cheeseburger just 69 cents, a sausage biscuit 79 cents. But if you're in a hurry, don't worry. Because this is not a promotion. It's McDonald's today. And from now on, Alpine Air has just gotten bigger with their faster, smoother Cheyenne 3. Expanded their schedule for timely connections and broadened their horizons to include Grand Junction, Colorado. Moab is now more accessible through Salt Lake to the west and Grand Junction to the rest of the world. Alpine Air, your Moab connection. It was typical June weather as warm sunshine and afternoon clouds stayed in the valley on Wednesday, soft breezes, 
and midsummer temperatures in the upper 90s. And look for more blue skies, high temperature readings over the next few days in the 90s. Official National Weather Service forecast for Moab and Canyon Country calls for mostly sunny skies through Thursday and Friday. Days will stay warm with highs in the mid to upper 90s approaching 100 degrees by the beginning of the weekend. And don't be surprised if some clouds rondel into the valley in the late afternoons and evenings with just a slight chance of some showers. And that's news of Moab and Canyon Country. I'm Dee Tranter reporting. Have a good day. Welcome to the Channel 6 News, I'm Jim Kelly reporting. The Chamber of Commerce is up and running in its new location. The State Lands Board will hold a meeting in Moab on Friday, and Butch Cassidy Day's Rodeo Week is going strong. We'll have these stories when the Channel 6 News continues. A symbol of strength, a symbol of stability, a symbol of longevity, First Western National Bank, embodying the values of Canyon Country for 30 years. See the sparkling jewel at Certified Ford, a new 92 Mercury Topaz two-door GS. Sporty with a five-speed stick, luggage rack, and seven-spoke aluminum wheels. Comfortable with cloth seats, cruise control, and the comfort convenience option group. Cool with air, AM, FM cassette, and a $400 cold cash rebate. See it, drive it, love it for under $10,000 at Certified Ford, your hometown dealer. Moab Chamber of Commerce is getting settled into its new temporary home. The Chamber has set up its offices in the UTEX building off Center Street. Furnishings are sparse now, but the Chamber hopes to use the office to begin an aggressive campaign to become more involved in the business and social activities of the town. The Chamber had been at the Moab Visitor Center on North Main Street, sharing the building with the Grand County Travel Council. But room was at a premium there, and after conflicts over dividing up the space, the Travel Council helped pay for the Chamber's move to Center Street. Chamber board member Tom Schellenberger, speaking at the Chamber's weekly luncheon meeting, said the organization is looking forward to a busy year. One major change is the decision of the Chamber board to move toward a full-time professional director who can coordinate the Chamber's ongoing programs, help launch new ones, and actively recruit businesses to the organization. 
According to Schellenberger, the job has been offered to Paula Atkins, who is hoping to move to Moab from Fort Worth, Texas, with her family. Schellenberger said the chamber has been in a state of flux the last month, but now is ready to go. Now things are back online. For a while, we went for about a month without anybody answering the phone or it got answered sporadically, and people didn't know if the chamber really existed anymore. But yes, we do exist. And with Paula's help and whatever staff she chooses to have on board, uh, should this become a reality, we have some, we've, Shane and John and I have been talking to her about the pretty exciting programs that will be implemented, and uh, I think you'll see some real new, exciting things happen with the chamber. And Schellenberger announced the chamber has begun a new service for its members. We're now doing uh, mailings on labels, the same as the Travel Council have been doing. In other words, people that are in lodging or uh, river rafting or something like that can now go to the chamber once a week and pick up labels, computer labels that are, have been generated by phone calls and, and letters that have come into the chamber. And Jeanette and Jan put them on to these labels. You can pick them up for three cents a piece. Um, and mail information about your business out to people requesting information. The Chamber of Commerce is also actively involved in the Superhost program where local business employees are given skills to help meet customer needs. As Moab becomes more popular as a tourist destination, the ability to work with visitors can make the difference between business success or failure. One of the Superhost trainers is Colette Martin, who recently led a Superhost workshop for a number of Moab young people teaching high school kids coming into entry-level positions and they are taking with them we hope um, some education and communication skills um, and the program is based to teach them how the tourism dollar will affect their jobs and how they can promote tourism bring the people back and increase that dollar um, we also hope that they walk out and it makes these entry-level positions a little easier for them they're being instructed, as um, I said in the past, in communication skills, listening skills, how to handle conflicts, both um, with coworkers and with their customers, how to resolve them so that everyone's happy. And then we wrap the uh, session up with the uh, baseline information about the state of Utah and then about the local tourist industry. The trainees in Colette's class were just out of school and most have gotten jobs that require clear communications with visitors. We just hope that it helps them walk into these positions with a little more confidence and the ability to uh, perform their job better. And like I told them at the beginning of the class, if I would had some of these things taught to me before I started working, probably wouldn't have had as many hard knocks and as many things to learn the hard way. So we hope that that's what we accommodate them with is available to the public. Um, you can sign up through the Moab Chamber of Commerce office. They will be held on the 17th, the 23rd, and the 28th of this month. Or, excuse me, I believe that's the 29th. And uh, you can contact either Jen or Jeanette at the Chamber of Commerce. The price is $15 if you are a member of the Chamber of Commerce. If you are not a member of the Chamber, it's $20. Uh, that fee includes your instruction, your work packet and um, then upon passing the course you will receive a pen and a certificate that you'll be able to use um, for future job references. And for more information you can call the Chamber of Commerce at 259-7531. The State Lands Board would like to charge a fee for rock hounding. A local doctor rocks out for the rodeo, and 4-H kids get ready for the livestock show. We'll have those stories when we return. Imagine it's Father's Day. Now picture Dad here. Now picture the smile on his face as he relaxes in his new Lane recliner. Now on sale at Moab Hardware and Furniture. And for the perfect companion, how about an RCA or GE TV? They're on sale too. Moab Hardware and Furniture, your Father's Day headquarters. Whether you're a cowboy or just a cowboy at heart, when you head for the Butch Cassidy Days Rodeo in Moab, make sure you're wearing the new pair of Wrangler cowboy cut jeans from on the edge of 415 North Main. 
Wrangler cowboy cut jeans are extra tough, super durable, and they look as great as they feel. That's why 96% of the PRCA champion cowboys wear them. So before you head for the rodeo, head for On the Edge at 415 North Main and take advantage of the great deals on Wrangler cowboy cut jeans. It's time, time for Spanish Valley Nursery to have a summer sale. Hanging baskets now 50% off at 1288 each. It's time to think about Father's Day with a gift of shrubbery or bearing fruit trees. And it's still time for bedding plants like geraniums and petunias. But don't wait too long, they're disappearing fast at Spanish Valley Nursery, where it's always first quality. For all your insurance needs in Moab, it's Central Utah Insurance. Home, auto, business, and life. You can depend on the fast, friendly service at Central Utah Insurance, 471 South Main. The State Lands Board is meeting in Moab on Friday morning, beginning at 8.30 in Star Hall. One item on the agenda is the State Trust Lands located near the Slick Rock Bike Trail. The BLM is interested in acquiring these parcels for recreational use. The BLM would trade these lands for other parcels owned by the federal agency. The Division of State Lands and Forestry is recommending continuing the current withdrawal pending negotiations with the BLM. Some members of the State Land Board have stated that they would like to sell or lease these lands as soon as possible. Also on the agenda is a proposal to charge a fee to issue a rock hounding permit to families and individuals. Once again, that meeting starts in the morning at 8.30 in Star Hall on Center Street. Butch Cassidy Day's Rodeo Week activities are in full swing with nightly entertainment at the Old Moab location on 1st, South, and Main. On hand for Wednesday night's show was a new group to Moab, the Political Spectrum with Dr. Art Grzynski on saxophone. Dr. Art was in exceptional form playing to an appreciative crowd. <laughs> We asked Dr. Art about his cowboy history. I imagine from the way you played that you grew up on a farm in Montana, is that right? Uh, actually, there weren't too many farms in Brooklyn, but uh, I did get to see some horses uh, pulling some fruit stands. We haven't been able to verify any cowboys that took their saxophone along on the trail ride, but Dr. Art might start a new fad. The first night of rodeo gets underway Thursday night at the Old Spanish Trail Arena at 8 p.m. This year's stock is provided by the Diamond G Rodeo Stock Company owned by Lewis Field, three times world all-around cowboy champion. It promises to be a night of fun for the entire family. Rodeo performances will also be held Friday and Saturday night at the arena with a parade down Main Street starting at 10 a.m. on Saturday. Besides the rodeo this weekend, it's also time for the 4-H Club Annual Livestock Show and Auction on Saturday. Moab area youngsters have been working for months in raising the animals as a learning experience. According to Kathy Wilson, the aim is to teach responsibility and the value of work and to help the youngsters develop a positive self-image. One of the main objectives of 4-H is to teach kids self-esteem. Um, they learn responsibility for the animals because they have to feed them and take care of them. They learn grooming, they learn record keeping, they learn financial management. Some of the kids that raise steers of course go down to the bank and get a loan so that enforces financial responsibility. Last year's top lamb belonged to Krista Wilson and she's hoping to win again. I'm getting my lamb Oki ready for the Grand County Junior Livestock 4-H show this Saturday. And Krista went over the details of the show and auction. There's going to be 14 lambs, one steer, and one hog. 
What time's it gonna be? One, it shows at 1.30, and then there's gonna be a break, and the auction's at four. Okay, where's it gonna be held? It's gonna be at the Old Spanish Trail Arena. The livestock program is just one aspect of 4-H, a program that needs adult volunteers. Contact the extension office. Uh, unfortunately, we've got more kids than we have leaders. And we have many programs in 4-H besides the livestock club. We have sewing, calligraphy, computer, rocket, archery, anything a kid would want to do, 4-H has got a program for them. And once again, the show is at 1.30 and the auction at 4 p.m. this Saturday at the Old Spanish Trail Arena. Up next is the Canyon Country weather forecast when the Channel 6 News continues. For the unusual gift, try Sherry's Country Store Gifts. Sherry grew up around country stores and knows there has to be something for all the five senses. Something to see, smell, taste, touch and hear, and give the sense you're a welcome customer. The walls are filled with unique goods from different corners of the world. So for the memorable gift of quality, come to Sherry's Country Store Gifts in the Western Plaza. Alpine Air has just gotten bigger with their faster, smoother Cheyenne 3. Expanded their schedule for timely connections and broadened their horizons to include Grand Junction, Colorado. Moab is now more accessible through Salt Lake to the west and Grand Junction to the rest of the world. Alpine Air, your Moab connection. If it's housewares, fabrics, or school supplies you need, Think Sprouse. If it's bed and bath items or health and beauty aids you're looking for, think Sprouse. For greeting cards, footwear, or toys, think Sprouse. For more values more often, think Sprouse. Now for extra savings, look for these special tags, manager's special purchases, jackpot buys, and discount food and snacks. Sprouse. Thunderstorms rolled into the valley early Thursday morning and stayed around for most of the day. The high for Thursday was 95 with a low of 73. Look for more of the same the next few days as a low pressure is expected to move into the area, dropping temperatures into the mid-80s with widely scattered thundershowers bringing more rain. It's great for the lawn and gardens, but don't bother to wash the car. The long-range forecast calls for a return to more summer-like weather by late Sunday. And that's the news of Moab and Canyon Country. I'm Jim Kelly reminding you to keep on smiling. <laughs>to the Channel 6 News, I'm Ken Davey reporting. The State Lands Board and the BLM seem to be about to reach an agreement to trade lands and both sides say it's a good deal. Local residents say they're ready to begin a petition drive to change the form of county government and a part-time Moab resident takes a big step toward earning a spot on the United States Olympic team. We'll have those stories when the Channel 6 News continues.
Imagine it's Father's Day. Now picture Dad here. Now picture the smile on his face as he relaxes in his new Lane recliner. Now on sale at Moab Hardware and Furniture. And for the perfect companion, how about an RCA or GE TV? They're on sale too. Moab Hardware and Furniture, your Father's Day headquarters. A symbol of strength, a symbol of stability, a symbol of longevity. First Western National Bank, embodying the values of Canyon Country for 30 years. A possible land trade between the state of Utah and the Bureau of Land Management took a big step forward Friday here in Moab when the State Lands Board agreed to extend the withdrawal from sale or lease on about 2,800 acres of school trust land near the Slick Rock Bike Trail. The decision came at the Moab meeting of the State Lands Board, who heard from both their own division of state lands and the Grand Resource Area of the Bureau of Land Management. The area around Sand Flats Road has become increasingly popular with recreationists. That's especially true for mountain bike riders who come to try the Slick Rock Bike Trail. In addition, the area is also popular with four-wheel drive enthusiasts. But that popularity has led to problems of sanitation and fears that the scenic beauty could be destroyed. The Bureau of Land Management has been working to set up a management plan for the lands along Sand Flats, but the existence of the state-owned acres makes long-term federal planning difficult. The solution, agreed to both by the state and federal government, is to trade the lands for other parcels the state can then develop, and they've settled on about 1,100 acres near Halls Crossing and the Glen Canyon National Recreation Area. The state agreed to withdraw the Sand Flats land last year, but no agreement was made because of disagreements over the value of the properties. According to state lands official Kevin Carter, the chances of working out a deal are now looking good, and the board decided to keep trying. The board had withdrawn the state lands in that area so that we could work with the BLM in processing and exchange, and that withdrawal was due to expire this month. And so uh, we had not yet finished all of the work which we needed to do in order to either accomplish the exchange or deny the exchange. And so we came in asking the board to extend the withdrawal for a little while longer until we could address some more fully some of the issues. They chose to do that. They, they extended the withdrawal until the next time they meet in Moab, which they will anticipate doing next May or next June. So it's practically another year extension of the withdrawal. During that time, we anticipate being able to get with the BLM and come to an agreement on how we'll have their property and our property appraised so that we can both feel comfortable with the values that are established. School trust lands belong to the state and are managed to generate money for education in Utah. Trading the Sands Flats parcels for more valuable land can help education and lands division personnel recommended pursuing the deal. That followed the recommendation of the division. It gave us a little more time latitude, so I'm comfortable with that decision. What do you think the schedule will be now? Do you think you'll be able to get this done in the 11 or 12 months you have? I'm comfortable with that. I'm sure that we'll be able to, as Brad and I were just discussing, we're talking about the next steps to implement things necessary to, to complete that evaluation. And what are some of those things? Well, we have to agree upon the process under which it will be done, uh, how we might contract with an appraiser, the conditions of that, and the instructions provided to that appraiser to uh, allow him to make that appraisal with conditions that we are both agree upon. The federal government is also pleased by the state decision. I think it's an appropriate decision, Ken. Uh, this is a t too big of an issue for us to just dismiss, and it's too important of an area for us to write off. Uh, we're planning right now to go into an activity management plan for that particular area, but this withdrawal and the acquisition of those state parcels is, is a, an important part of that activity management plan. 
it would be very difficult for us to manage the activity and what's what's happening in that area without being uh, having some type of control over those state lands. And again, when we get into the activity planning process, then we'll bring the public into it to provide us their expertise on how they feel that area should be managed. In the past, there have been conflicts between the state and BLM over land trades, and both agencies believe this deal, if it works, will set a positive precedent for the future. We, we have had disagreements with the federal government on valuation questions, and, and uh, we see this as an alternative approach to perhaps uh, get past that valuation problem and, and consummate an exchange with the federal government. Uh, we don't feel that, that, that the, the BLM is, is trying to be hard to work with and we don't feel like we're trying to be hard to work with. We just have different goals and sometimes they don't mesh very well and, and we have to work harder to get things to pull together. Because both uh, the BLM and the State Division of Lands staffs have put an awful lot of effort into this. Uh, we've had Steve Class from the Governor's Office helping us. Uh, we have a, ha we've had a lot of local participation in this. We would really like to be able to show some success. Uh, you know, again, we're trying to work uh, for the benefit of the people that come and enjoy this area, but we're also trying to take into account the people that live here too. And, and unless we can work together with the state uh, it's just, and the county, it's just going to be an insurmountable hurdle. Not everyone agrees with the trade. Grand County Commissioners have told the state they would prefer the land stay with the state where it would be open to sale or lease and economic development. The state says their views will be taken into account before a final decision is made. We will have to take their concerns into consideration if we proceed to a decision document recommending exchange of any of the lands. And, and we will be seeking their specific comments again in, in written form to evaluate with regards to exchanging out of these lands. Local government plays a big role in influencing board decisions, and so uh, we will we'll have to take very seriously their concerns. The next step, say officials, is hiring a third-party appraiser to value the lands. The federal government hopes to be able to issue an environmental assessment on the project and open it to public comment by September of this year. A part-time Moab resident is trying to peddle her way onto the U.S. Olympic team, and local citizens say they will begin the campaign to change the form of county government. We'll have those stories when the Channel 6 News continues. value foods, stress-free shopping, where the service is unbelievable. How do you have an instant party? Just buy a sack of subs at Subway, take them home and serve them family style. It's more fun because everyone gets a taste of everything and no one has to cook. So if unexpected guests drop by unexpectedly or you don't feel like cooking dinner, pick up a sack of subs at Subway. We specialize in solving emergencies with food. For more information on these and other fine sandwiches, visit the Subway near you. Whether you're a cowboy or just a cowboy at heart, when you head for the Butch Cassidy Days Rodeo in Moab, make sure you're wearing a new pair of Wrangler cowboy cut jeans from On the Edge of 415 North Main. Wrangler cowboy cut jeans are extra tough, super durable, and they look as great as they feel. That's why 96% of the PRCA champion cowboys wear them. So before you head for the rodeo, head for On the Edge at 415 North Main and take advantage of the great deals on Wrangler cowboy cut jeans. Citizens for Better Government will begin circulating a petition to change the form of county government this weekend. The group hopes to get enough signatures to place an initiative on the ballot this November. The plan calls for abolishing the current three-member county commission and replacing it with a seven-member council-type body. Five of those seats will be elected by districts and two will be elected countywide. The plan also calls for cutting the pay from the current $800 per month for commissioners and $1,200 per month for commission chairmen to an across-the-board $500 monthly salary without county benefits. 
and elections would be held on a nonpartisan basis. According to Petition Committee Chairperson Bill Shelton, the work gathering the signatures is getting underway soon. We will have people going out into the community during the next two weeks, gathering, a, gathering up names and signatures for the petition. We will also have a booth at the post office on June 19th and 20th between 8 and 6 o'clock. Okay, how many signatures is it going to require? We're going to need approximately 450 to 500 signatures for the petition. Okay, after you collect those signatures, then what's the next step? The next step on after collecting the signatures is turning them over to the county clerk. To sign the petition, you must be a registered voter, and your registration must be updated with your current address. Citizens for Better Government members say they will also be signing up registered voters at the same time they are collecting the signatures. And Shelton says the sign-ups will begin right away. Okay, if people want to sign a petition, they want to sign it right away, what they can do is contact me after 5 o'clock at 259-7967. County commissioners here say that if the proper number of signatures is reached, they will work to be sure it gets on the November ballot. By law, they can delay holding the vote for up to 18 months. About a month ago, we reported on part-time Moab resident and world-class bicyclist Allison Dunlop and her efforts to win a spot on the United States Olympic team. Dunlop left for a series of races in Japan along with some of the best women bikers in the world and Allison showed she belongs at the top of that list. She finished seventh in the first race at Osaka then third in the race at Nagoya. In the third and final race taking place in the capital city of Tokyo Allison finished first and that gave her enough points to finish on top in the overall Japanese circuit standings. But there isn't much rest for those who are aiming for bigger things this summer. Dunlop heads off to the United States Olympic Trials this week in the hope of landing a place on the team and representing the nation in Barcelona this summer. The visitation numbers for Dead Horse Point State Park are now out, and they show the park is still on the way to a record-breaking year. According to Park Superintendent Rock Smith, almost 23,000 people visited what many consider the most scenic of the state parks in the month of May. That's a full 14% ahead of May of last year. So far this year, almost 56,000 people have taken in the views and used the park facilities, up 10% over 1991's record-breaking performance. Camping so far is up 8% this year, with the campsites filled virtually every night. So park officials recommend that anyone who wants to camp there should make reservations as much in advance as they can. And Rock Smith reminds people that the Visitor Center is on its summer schedule now, open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily, and there are nightly ranger programs at 8.30 p.m. at the Visitor Center. It's been a spring of change in Moab, with new businesses, motels, and restaurants opening. But there are some smaller enterprises that have been attracted to Moab as well. And one of them is Leon's Collectibles, which operates in the upstairs section of the Emporium building. Leon Lorette has moved his huge stock of antiques and prints from New Orleans to Moab. The shop contains items ranging from publications from the 1700s up to classic prints from the 1950s and just about everything in between. And at the grand opening of Leon's Collectibles, he took advantage of another new business in town, the Moab Mule Express. This business, operated by Camilla Green, provides mule-powered carriage rides through town. The two mules, Martha and Mary, will be working each evening. And according to Green, people have been responsive to the business. We'll be giving little sightseeing tours around Moab with the mules. And has there been much interest shown? Yes, quite a bit of interest. I'm surprised. People are interested in the mules and they're interested in in the whole horse and carriage idea, the return to yesterday. The Moab Mule Express will leave from the parking area at Main and First North each evening. The Canyon Lansfield Institute has announced that through the generosity of the Charles E. Red Foundation, scholarships are available for Grand and San Juan County teachers to take part in the Colorado Plateau Teachers Workshop, June 22nd through 26th. The workshop is an opportunity for teachers to learn about the natural and human history of the Colorado Plateau 
through readings, class sessions, field studies, and individual projects. The workshop will cover desert and mountain ecology, geology, and cultural history, as well as environmental issues affecting the Western states. The Charles E. Redd Foundation supports educational efforts in the region and will pay the tuition for interested local teachers. The only charge would be a filing fee for those interested in obtaining graduate university credit. So for information on the scholarships and on the workshop, you can call the Canyonlands Field Institute at 259-7750. Up next is the Canyon Country weather forecast when the Channel 6 News continues. Through the seasons, through the miles, through the rough country of southeastern Utah, we get you through. We're GTE. We're your telephone company. For the best RV camp park in Moab, it's Holiday Haven, with oversized spaces to accommodate the largest RV and cool, comfortable tent sites under mature shade trees, all with a convenient central location. Holiday Haven is also Moab's finest mobile home park that offers country living in the city. An established park with pool, playground, laundry facilities, and a retired section. For comfortable RV or mobile home living, it's Holiday Haven, 400 North, 5th West. Beautiful sunshine stayed in the valley on Friday with afternoon highs in the mid-90s and humidity below 30%. But it might not stay quite so picture perfect the next few days. The official National Weather Service forecast for Moab and Canyon Country calls for partly sunny skies through Saturday and Sunday with some afternoon and evening clouds and a chance of some lightning storms on Sunday. Look for temperatures around the 90 degree mark with overnight lows staying at the 65 degree mark. By Monday, there could be more sunshine but a chance of some scattered showers and temperatures going up. And by Tuesday and Wednesday, look for mercury readings in the upper 90s to 100 degrees. And that's the news of Moab and Canyon Country. I'm Ken Davey reporting. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to the Channel 6 News. I'm D. Tranter reporting. Moab police say they have recovered thousands of dollars in stolen goods and expect more than a dozen arrests after cracking a juvenile burglary ring operating in town. We'll have that story when Channel 6 News continues. A symbol of strength. A symbol of stability. A symbol of longevity. First Western National Bank, embodying the values of Canyon Country for 30 years. For the best RV camp park in Moab, it's Holiday Haven, with oversized spaces to accommodate the largest RV and cool, comfortable tent sites under mature shade trees, all with a convenient central location. Holiday Haven is also Moab's finest mobile home park that offers country living in the city. An established park with pool, playground, laundry facilities, and a retired section. For comfortable RV or mobile home living, it's Holiday Haven, 400 North, 5th West.
In case you've been too busy to notice, McDonald's prices have changed. An original hamburger is just 59 cents, a cheeseburger just 69 cents, a sausage biscuit 79 cents. But if you're in a hurry, don't worry. Because this is not a promotion. It's McDonald's today. And from now on... Moab police say they have made 10 arrests of juveniles and expect at least four more and plan to charge the youths with a variety of serious charges in a series of burglaries in Moab. Police say the youngsters will be charged with burglarizing homes, stealing bikes, and possessing and receiving stolen property after some tips helped the police make the arrests. According to police detective Mike Navarre, the arrest came about following a series of recent home break-ins. We had a report of a residential burglary on the 7th day of June. Uh, subsequently, another burglary took place about two days later uh, through a confidential informant. We done a follow-up on a lead brought in by an officer and uh, then netted nine arrests of juveniles for residential burglaries. Uh, there were one, two, three vehicle burglaries uh, and two stolen mountain bikes, which cleared, I believe, eight criminal cases for us. So there's nine juvenile referrals involved here, and uh, there are other referrals pending. The recent cases involved the homes of local residents who were out of town. Uh, these folks that are the victims were uh, on the residential burglary were out of town on vacation. And uh, a couple of the juveniles got in there and took some things and told some other juveniles and they went in and it was just a progressive thing from there which went downhill. Uh, some of the thefts that we uh, cleared during the case were as far back as a year ago. One of the mountain bike thefts was as much as a year ago, a year and a half. Uh, we also had a, a motor home that had been burglarized uh, two weeks ago and that was cleared and like I say, two uh, vehicle burglaries that were cleared. And all those were in about a three to four day period of the residential burglary. The stolen goods are now at the police station and they've been processed as evidence for future court actions. We've recovered about $10,000 worth of uh, stolen property. Uh, some of this uh, stereo equipment, uh, televisions, uh, jewelry, coins, uh, credit cards, keys. We also have uh, two car thefts involved in this, which will be joyriding. The car was returned. The names of juvenile defendants are generally not released to the public. These particular suspects range in age from 12 to 16, and the charges are serious. There'll be all different charges. Uh, some of the juveniles will be charged with residential burglary, felony theft, joyriding, felony vehicle burglary, felony theft. Uh, the mountain bikes would be felony theft because of their value. Uh, the burglaries on the vehicles, stereo equipment was taken out of there. Uh, the value of that equipment is in felony range also. There are some juveniles involved in this that will be charged with uh, possessing and receiving stolen property. That is, some of this property after it comes from the residences and the vehicles was then either traded or sold to other juveniles in the city. And for the last two days, we've just been receiving uh, pieces of property randomly by juveniles all over town. Juvenile court proceedings are closed to the public. It was a busy weekend in Moab. Things got underway Saturday morning with the annual Butch Cassidy Days Parade down Main Street. Before the festivities, there was music provided by the Desperados. And soon after that, the parade got underway, led by the Moab Fire Department and the county search and rescue teams. And Captain Action was there as well. County commissioners David Knudsen and Manuel Torres showed up, as did Smokey the Bear, riding in a Forest Service truck. The Red Rock stars performed dance numbers along the parade route, showing the skills that have earned them renown at Disneyland and Peach Bowl. 
The stuntman's Hall of Fame was on hand and, once again, couldn't control themselves during the parade. And also showing their steps were the Fallen Arches Square Dancers. The parade has become an annual event, and this year it was longer and attracted more spectators than ever before. Then the action shifted to the Old Spanish Trail Arena for the 4-H Club Livestock Show and Auction. This year's steer entry was raised by Dustin Gwynn, and the beef on the hoof was purchased by City Market. Bambi Holder raised the market hog, which went after spirited bidding to Riverside Plumbing. The grand champion lamb was raised by Melissa Eddy, and it was purchased by First Security. And the reserve champion was raised by Kelly Wilson and purchased by Certified Ford. Then it was time for the rodeo. It was the third big crowd in a row at that event, and they watched as local resident Matt Cresswell took first place in the bull riding event. Rodeo action, part of the professional rodeo cowboy association circuit, was the biggest ever in the county and will give the rodeo committee some needed extra money to help plan an even bigger week of activities next year. Independent candidate for Governor Merrill Cook comes to Moab and local residents get a chance to view a lunar eclipse. We'll have those stories when Channel 6 News continues. For the unusual gift, try Sherry's Country Store Gifts. Sherry grew up around country stores and knows there has to be something for all the five senses. Something to see, smell, taste, touch and hear, and give the sense you're a welcome customer. The walls are filled with unique goods from different corners of the world. So for the memorable gift of quality, come to Sherry's Country Store Gifts in the Western Plaza. Alpine Air has just gotten bigger with their faster, smoother Cheyenne 3. Expanded their schedule for timely connections and broadened their horizons to include Grand Junction, Colorado. Moab is now more accessible through Salt Lake to the west and Grand Junction to the rest of the world. Alpine Air, your Moab connection. If it's housewares, fabrics, or school supplies you need, Think Sprouse. If it's bed and bath items or health and beauty aids you're looking for, think Sprouse. For greeting cards, footwear, or toys, think Sprouse. For more values more often, think Sprouse. Now for extra savings, look for these special tags, manager's special purchases, jackpot buys, and discount food and snacks. Sprouse. Sunday evening, sky watchers had a special opportunity to view a unique celestial event, a partial eclipse of the moon. A lunar eclipse occurs when the earth comes between the sun and the moon, and the shadow cast by the earth puts the moon in darkness. The shadow moves across the moon, and just before 11 p.m. Sunday evening, it reached its peak with more than half of the moon's northern area obscured. And in just a week, it's the summer solstice, or the official beginning of summer. Officially, it arrives Saturday evening, June 20th at 9.14 p.m. At that time, the rotation of the Earth puts the sun in the highest point in the sky during the day. That makes the longest day of the year, with sunshine about 15 hours between sunrise and sunset. But after Saturday, the days get a little bit shorter, until December, when it's the winter solstice. A major topic of interest in national political circles is the independent presidential campaign of Ross Perot, but here in Utah, we're more used to independent candidates, and one reason is that of the efforts of Merrill Cook, who is running as an independent for governor of Utah. Cook was in Moab Monday, speaking to the Rotary Club luncheon, and campaigning door-to-door -door in town. And Cook told Channel 6 that the Perot campaign is making his job easier. Couldn't have written the script better myself. To have a very credible man like Ross Perot running and doing very well in Utah means that I'm going to have a better chance to win. People are not going to be as partisan. They're not going to be as likely just to vote straight Republican or straight Democrat. They're going to give those like me who have been an independent voice for years here in the state and have said, hey, we don't need to just follow what the 
uh, what the party bosses say. We can use our own minds and determine what kind of a future we want here in the state. It'll give people like me, and there's not that many of us, a real boost. Cook went over what he thinks are the big issues in the governor's campaign. Well, the education, the health care reform, and the tax limitation are the three big issues. I'm also uh, talking a lot about the economic development opportunities, particularly in rural Utah, and why I think it's important that we get the opportunity to vote on the paramutual question. Uh, other issues that come up are how, how do I feel, how do the others feel about the Olympic bid. I think it's premature to build bobsleds and luge runs before we know. Hundreds of thousands of Utah residents do not have health insurance, and many more are finding rising premiums could wipe out their coverage. Cook says there are ways to ease those problems. We can change our insurance laws to make sure that people aren't denied insurance because of pre-existing conditions. We can make sure that if they change jobs, they're not uh, losing some basic uh, opportunity for health care insurance. Uh, I think we can bring access to every Utah because we have three and a half billion dollars into that system and a lot of it's being wasted on administrative costs. We just need to restructure some of that so that we don't have this cost explosion of insurance premiums into the future and so that we get the 200,000 Utahns that aren't covered, you know, onto the rolls. Cook is known as a tax reformer who believes taxes can be lowered without a loss of public service. And he says that can be done in Utah. The tax cuts are, are necessary to stimulate Utah's economy. We forget, just because we hear the established media sources acting like tax cuts would ruin government services, we're forgetting that we're one of the highest taxed states in the nation. We're forgetting that we've had huge surpluses in each of the last four years. And we're forgetting that we could just limit the growth in government to inflation and population growth, and by so doing, lower sales and income taxes to about 5% and freezing property taxes. Those are all very possible things to do now in Utah because we've taken our taxes so high in the last four or five years. How do you respond to the people who say that education is not being funded correctly and that surplus should go into that rather than into tax cuts? Well, I care a lot about education. And if we would change that and admit that enough of that education money isn't getting into the classroom then we would be on track with what we're saying. Hey, education is getting 50% more than it did just four years ago. The trouble is a decreasing percentage of what we're putting up for it is getting to the classroom for teacher pay for textbooks and supplies. We have to reorganize with cons some consolidations, particularly up on the Wasatch Front. Uh, we need to cause, uh, allow a line item in the legislative approach towards education to make sure that the money that we do appropriate gets to the classroom. A big issue facing Utah voters could be an initiative to let counties allow paramutual betting on local horse races, and Cook says he's for it. I'm going to be voting for it because I think every county ought to have the right to make that determination. You see, uh, here in, uh, in Grand County or in uh, uh, Millard County or wherever, county commissioners could then decide, if we go ahead and vote on that, whether or not it, it makes sense for the economic development of their region. I think we ought to allow this kind of local government control again here in the state of Utah. I think it would do a lot to stimulate economic development off of, off of just the Wasatch Front. Most of these economic development programs that we've been uh, designing haven't really helped other areas of the state. Moab's doing well because it's such a great tourist opportunity and the beauty and the, you know, the surroundings. But, uh, you know, the commissioners here ought to have the right to decide whether it's going to make sense for Grand County, just like other commissioners ought to have that right. For the next few months, Cook will be the only major candidate definitely on the ballot in the race to replace retiring Governor Norman Bangader. The Democrats will definitely, and the Republicans probably, have primaries in September to choose their candidates. Well, fans of professional wrestling have an opportunity this week to see a good dose of their sport and at the same time raise money for the high school athletics. The wrestling card includes a Moab favorite, Jimmy Superfly Snuka, in a special tag team match when he is teamed with the Tongan Warrior against South African Colonel De Beers and Playboy Buddy Rose. Also on tap is up next is the Canyon Country weather forecast when Channel 6 News continues.
price value foods stress-free shopping where the service is unbelievable Rim Cyclery is the hub of the action in the mountain bike capital of the world, carrying the specialized Klein and Mountain Goat brands and fully staffed with experts in mountain bike service. Rim is also your stop for camping gear and accessories and sportswear featuring Gramici shorts and tops. Bikers, here's a simple rule. If you're gearing up, see Rim. If you've broken down, see Rim. 94 West, 100 North. Bright sunshine stayed in the valley on Monday, but the low pressure that moved into town over the weekend remains, keeping afternoon temperatures down in the low 80s. A refreshing change, but look for some clouds over the next few days and a chance of some scattered showers. The official National Weather Service forecast for Moab and Canyon Country calls for partly cloudy skies through Wednesday. Thermometer readings should rise slowly over the week with uh, Tuesday's highs around 85 and up to the mid-90s by Friday. Expect overnight lows near the 60-degree mark. And the long-range forecast says mostly clear skies by next weekend with highs above 90 degrees. And that's news from Moab and Canyon Country. I'm D. Tranter reporting. Have a good day.